first Q&A regarding the CSENT course. Over the past few months, I've been uh, receiving a ton of questions and comments regarding the CSENT course, both the one I'm producing and also the CSENT and CCNA in general. So I thought I'd put together a Q&A video series outlining some of the questions and answers. If you watch this and you believe it's helpful, please let me know, give it a thumbs up, give me a comment, so I know it's worth the time and effort producing these types of videos. So for those who don't know, you can contact me here on YouTube, on LinkedIn, or Twitter. So what's the plan with the Q&As moving forward? Uh, the idea is essentially two main reasons. First of all, it's to collaborate and answer both your technical and non-technical questions. These questions have been gathered over the last couple of months, um, particularly around the course, both the CSENT, CCNA, and what this video series is going to offer you. This means this particular Q&A will be focused around non-technical questions. And by answering these questions, I'm hoping it will play nicely into what I see the second reason for the Q&A series. And that is giving us the ability to share opinions, ideas and knowledge with one another. There are some answers I'm going to give to questions which are purely on my opinion and there are no facts behind it. For example, maybe I might tell you reading a book's better than watching videos. Well, that's not always the case. And the other thing I may even say is something technically incorrect. Not everything I say and do is always going to be as accurate as it can be. I have no technical reviewers and it's only based on my own knowledge and my own understanding. So it's important we work together to build a community to help each other achieve those goals. So the first question, what should I use for my studying? Now this is very tricky. First thing I would say is don't just use my videos. The videos that I've produced are about 30 to 35 percent complete at time of recording. Even if they were 100 percent complete, I would recommend that you use multiple sources. Ideally, use at least one book and a video series. Now, I learn better with video, and that's why I decided to create a video series. But books do include a lot of detail that you simply cannot capture in a video. So make sure you at least have one book. When I'd done the CSENT, I actually had two. I got the Cisco Press book, and I also got the Todd Lamo book, from which I believe was a Cybex book. Now if you learn from videos, and you really do not like books, then make sure that you have a lot of resources. I try to recommend using something with a high technical standard, such as CBT Nuggets or INE but they do come with a price tag. And there are other people on YouTube like Andrew's video or Network King. The second part to this question is how are you going to get your hands on experience? Cisco certifications are very driven and ensuring that engineers not only understand the theory but can do it in a practical sense. And because of that, we have simulations and simulates on the exam. So it's important that you have that hands on experience. So you would use your books and videos for the theory and maybe get some ideas from some labs, but ultimately you need some way of actually having a Cisco and playing with that, whether that's virtually on your PC using some software like GNS3 or Packet Tracer, or is that something like buying the equipment themselves, maybe buying a bunch of 2600s and buying a couple of 3550 switches and then racking it and playing with it. If this is something that you're interested in knowing more, maybe how to use GNS or how to use Packet Tracer, maybe even a video around best practices as far as the home lab's concerned, at least it's what I've done, then let me know in the comments. But there are a lot of resources out there for this already. Okay, so next question, how much is the exam? And I've also got a comment here that said ICND1 versus ICN2 versus CSENT versus CCNA. Now, this information can be easily obtained on the Cisco website at cisco.com within the certification section. Now, the ICND1 and ICND2 is the exam names 
to obtain the CCN or CCNA. And the way this works is you need to do the ICND-1 in order to achieve a CCENT, the CCN. And after you've done the ICND-1, you can then go on and do the ICND-2. And only after you've done the ICND-2 do you get your CCNA. Now there is an option to do the singular exam and that's to do a single exam for the CCNA rather than doing the ICND-1 and ICND-2. But that exam is driven for engineers who have already have a lot of experience in the field or engineers that already have their CCNA and it needs to be renewed. I would highly recommend if you're new to Cisco and you know even if you've been in networking for quite some time there's no harm in going down the ICND-1 and ICND-2 route. The exams are cheaper than the single CCNA exam and it helps spread the load of the material that you need to learn and understand. Now we go to the Cisco website to find out the cost and details around the exam. If you go to training and events and then click on CSENT and scroll down you're going to see it tells you in order to get the CSENT you need to do the 100-105 which is called the ICND-1 ICND sorry and if you click on the CCNA and if you just scroll down you can see just here it shows you you can do two ways of obtaining the CCNA as I previously said you can do it the two part way which is doing the 1-100-105 this will ensure that you get the CCENT after completing it and this is what my videos are focusing on right now after you finish this and you've obtained your CCENT, you would do the second part, which is the ICND-2, and then after this, you would earn your CCNA. Alternatively, what you can do is simply take the single exam, I say simply, it's not always the case, with the uh, single exam of 200-125 and obtain your CCNA. Both are valid, both are pretty much the same cost, it's just how you would prefer to do it. Now as far as the cost is concerned, in order to find the cost, you need to actually register for the exam. So if you click on Take Exam and click Register, it will take you to the Pearson Views website. And from the Pearson Views, if you create an account just here and select obviously your country and your nearest test center it will come up with the price of the exam. Okay, so next question what topics are on the CCENT exam? So again let's go back to the Cisco website let's go back on the CCENT and for those that are elsewhere on the website to get to here go training and events CCENT scroll down and if you click on the actual exam it will give you more information about it. So you can see the exam code, how many questions and how long you've got, who's actually you can register to take the exam with. So in this case it's Pearson View. You can do an exam tutorial, highly recommended. This will show you what some of the questions are going to be like in your exam. And you can read the policy and non-disclosure agreement. But if you go to review exam topics, just down the bottom here, it's going to actually bring up the exam topics for the ICND-1. And then from here, what you can do is simply expand each section of the blueprint. You can see that it's split into five sections in total, all with a given percentage to show you how much of the actual blueprint consists of the topics. So here being land switching will be the most tested topic by 1% routing behind it. And it's important that you go through this list and you ensure that you understand and are confident with each topic. So for example, do you know the difference between the Open System Interconnect and the TCP IP models? Do you know the difference between TCP and UDP? Maybe you might know that TFTP is UDP and FTP is TCP. 
you might want to know the port numbers that each application uses and why TCP gives us reliability and UDP doesn't. So these are the sort of things that you want to make sure that when you go through the blueprint, these are the types of questions you want to be asking yourself. And moving on to question number four, how long should I study? This is, again, very difficult for me to answer because it really depends on you as an individual and your background. It also depends on how much you're committed to actually getting the CCN and CCNA. A lot of people say they're committed and they do it for a week every day and then they burn themselves out. You need to make sure that you know it's a marathon, not a sprint. Some people will take a month, some people will take six months. All I would say is consistency is the goal. Don't think that you should get it done in one or two months and also don't be alarmed if it takes you three months. There's a lot of information to learn in the CCNA and CCNA and this is the foundations so the learning curve is ridiculously high. Just pace yourself, take your time and just be consistent. Doing a bit every other day is more than enough to obtain the certification. Okay, how many videos will be in the CCNA? So at the moment in the videos I've got about 20, 21 videos and that's covered most of network and fundamentals and some of LAN switching. Uh, I expect there'll be around 50 to 60 videos when the series is complete. Depending on the feedback for these Q&As and any other suggestions for videos, I would try to add them in but keep them separate from the actual playlist as just additional extras for people to watch if they're interested. Okay, so next question, question number six, do you have any advice? So my advice to this would be, again, make sure that you're not rushing through it. You're building the foundations for a CCN and CCNA and for networking in general. A lot of engineers will pass the qualification, rushing through, thinking they understand the technologies, but when it comes to actually implementing them, not fully understanding what's going on behind the scenes. The longer you spend at the CCNT and CCNA, it will really pay dividends later down the road when you start going on to your CCMP and CCIE. And that doesn't mean spend months and months on it. Obviously, you want to get out the door, but what I'm trying to say is let's not try to rush it here. It's important that you actually understand what's happening behind the scenes. The other advice I would give you is I'm a very, very avid note taker. I take notes, and the reason I take a lot of notes is to really ensure that I can track my personal progress and also to ensure that I've captured all the information needed. So to give you an example, I use a platform called OneNote and I have a ridiculous amount of notes depending on the technologies and how each technology works. Uh, these are just an insane amount of notes Bear in mind that this is not CCENT and CCNA, these are CCIE level notes. So obviously there's going to be a lot more in here than what you would expect to see at the CCENT or CCNA. But the beauty of taking these levels of notes also ensures that your day-to-day -day job as a network engineer becomes very easy. Because you're able to refer back to your own notes in order to refresh your mind on how a technology works. And it also helps you build the sort of technologies and labs moving forward into production. My other advice would be time management. A lot of people tend to study in the evening, which is great, but I try to actually study in the morning. I get up a few hours before work and study then, because that's when I have most of my energy. And if I study in the morning, then in the evenings, I have my own time back, and it gives me time to do other things like socialize. So I try to put the most important task of my day at the beginning, where again, I have most energy. The downside is you obviously have to go bed early. So getting up at 5 a.m., for example, making sure you go in bed at 10 or 11. Don't cut the sleep out in order to try and find time for the CCNA. Okay, so moving on to question number seven. Are there more videos to come? Yes, the videos are released weekly. Um, unfortunately, due to sort of other commitments, I'm unable to produce more at the moment. The total video series will be about 60 videos or so for the CCNA. And then obviously we'll move on to ICND2, which leads me on to question number eight, which is, are you going to do ICND2 videos? Yes, I will be doing ICD2 videos. I'll be doing the full CCN and CCNA, but of course I need to finish the ICND1 videos first. 
Hopefully this video has been helpful in going over some of the most popular questions I've been asked and my opinions on them. If you have any other tips, tricks or questions regarding the CCN and CCNA, please leave a comment below. I'm sure that someone will actually benefit massively from what you have to say regarding your experience and your advice on what you're doing with the CCN and CCNA or what you've done to achieve your CCN and CCNA. Be sure to like the video and subscribe and again let me know if this is something that you want to continue moving forward with different Q&As both technical and non-technical.